let us look at data frames and data sets. So why we want to use data frames? This is because there are two key challenges. The first one is ETL. If you remember from the first lecture, that means extract, transform, and load. So ETL to and from various semi-structured data sources and unstructured data sources are challenging. And the second challenge is advanced analytic analytics, such as machine learning, are difficult to express in relational systems. And therefore, Spark has developed the following solutions. The first one is a data frame API to perform relational operations on both external data sources and uh, Spark's building RDDs. Okay, so that data frame is basically enables us to perform relational operations, okay? perform relational operations. And the second is a highly extensible optimizer called Catalyst to use Scala features to add composable rule, control code generation, and define extensions, right? So these are some more advanced tools, but you don't need to worry about it because it is all building, right? So it's all building. So data frame based API has been uh, adopted, has become, became the primary API for the machine learning library since version 2.0. And so this was voted by the community. And if you look at the APIs, if it is .ml, that means the data frame based API. And then the previous RDD based API entered the maintenance mode. Right? So it still maintains with bug fixes, but no new features will be added. And if you look at the documentation, and if you look at some of the code, if it is MLlib, that means the RDD based API for machine learning library. Right? So this is uh, the announcement in Spark 2.0. Right? So that's a long time ago. So there are two concepts over here. Right? So one is data frames and another is data sets. So data frame is basically something has a schema. Right? So if you remember, we talk about the data structure Typically, we talk about schema, right? Data frames has a schema and it is, it is generic untyped, right? So it's just like a table, right? So data frames look just like a table and you will see it in the lab, right? So, and data set is static typing, right? It has a static typing and it is strongly typed. And uh, since Spark 2.0, they have been unified, right? So they have been unified. So data frame is basically considered as a data set organized into named columns, right? So data frame is considered as one type of data set, right? So basically each row is considered a data and uh, then many rows are basically data sets, right? So in, since, uh, since Spark 2.0, uh, that is in 2016, these two has been unified, right? Under one uh, common API. And uh, since you see the typing over here, there, so it will be also good to learn a little bit more about the typed and untyped APIs for Spark, right? So, there are four main languages for Spark. One is Scala, that is what uh, Spark was written, 
in original, right? So Spark was developed in using Scala. So the main abstraction is data set and data free, right? And data free. And T means type, right? So that is type. And Java is also a typed, uh, typed language, has typings to use data set and type. And for Python, right? So Python, that is what we are working on, PySpark. The main abstraction is data free, right? So you don't need to worry about data set. We will only talk about data free, right? So R is also has only, R also only has uh, data free, right? So that is um, basically untyped, right? So we have used untyped APIs. And the benefits of the data set APIs, right? So um, is, so as we said, right? Data frame is a special type of data set, right? So we still talk about data set APIs, but uh, it's applicable to the data frame, right? So it's static typing and uh, has runtime type safety, right? So in SQL, SQL is not restrictive, right? So there's no syntax error until you actually run the code, right? So that therefore you when there's an error, you will not know uh, you will not know the error before you actually run the program, right? So if you just use SQL. But the data frame and data set will be able to detect syntax errors, right? So at the compile time before you actually run the program. And they, they are high level abstraction and uh, provide custom view into the structured and the semi-structured data, such as CSV, right? So they are um, very helpful in viewing the data, right? So you inspect the data. And they also provide ease to use, ease of use APIs with structure, right? So they have very rich semantics and uh, they provide many domain specific operations that is very convenient and compact. Lastly, in terms of, in terms of the performance and optimization of the code, they can use SQL Catalyst, right? So which is very efficient, which is very efficient. So let us look at an example of a data frame, which is uh, basically a distributed collection of rows with the same schema, right? With the same schema. Here is a data frame. As we said, it just look like a table, right? Just look like a table. And this is a schema defines the first column is the department. And the second column is about the age. Third column is about the name, right? So the data is basically grouped into named columns, right? So it looks like a table. And if you use a RDD API to, for example, to compute the average age of each department, then this is a code, right? So, but if you use data frame API, you just need to write one line, right? So data group by department and uh, average the age, right? So this is what we have been talking about earlier about the semantics, right? It has very rich semantics, right? So you, by reading this line of code, right? You know what it is doing, right? So exactly, and by reading this code, right? So it will be a little bit difficult, right? Unless you are very proficient in Python, right? Otherwise you don't know what it is doing, right? So, but using the data frame API, you know what it is doing, right? So it has rich semantics, right? So, and so data frame can be constructed from external data sources, right? So external data sources, or from RDDs, right? so, in, so basically it is, uh, can be viewed as an RDD of row objects, right? So it is basically an RDD of row objects, right? So it's a special kind of data sets. 
and uh, most importantly, right? So it supports relational operators such as where group by, right? So group by was used here and many other relational operators, right? So at, at also Spark operations that makes the programming very convenient, right? So Spark data frames, they are very fast, right? So this is a, um, a comparison in terms of the running time, right? So you can see if we use data frames, both the Python version and Scala version are very fast compared to the RDT version, right? So it is particularly so for the Python because Python RDT is quite slow, right? So slower than um, the Scala version, right? So um, this is also because it uses a Spark SQL catalyst optimizer, right? So, um, that is only available for the data frames. And uh, data frames are also uh, space uh, has high space efficiency, right? So this is a figure comparing the memory usage when caching, when we use data sets or data frames um, and uh, compared to use RDD, right? So it's much more um, space efficient, right? Space efficient. So that is the um, introduction uh, to data frames and data sets. Right, so uh, then in the next section, we move on to machine learning pipelines.